This is something I experimented with late into last night. It's not something new. I've already made a video about this, but I think that the magic mask has gotten a little bit better and I have a new approach for how I use it, plus a bunch of other things in Resolve that you can use with the magic mask to make some cool stuff. This footage you've seen a bunch of times by now, but I first tested it on here because this was shot on film and I wanted to see how well it would do with the grain. So we can adjust the background separately and her face separately. The reason that I went to controlling her face separate was because I made the background yellow and I needed some yellow to go onto her face to kind of make her feel like she was within this yellow void. We have a grade here and before the grade we can go over to magic mask. Draw a line on her first. I keep it in object mode because I feel like it's better than person, at least for this shot. I will click the mask overlay and just make sure it's kind of getting her. I don't want this so I'll hold alt or option and get rid of that. This part of the hair is a little tricky but I will try to remove that as well and add this back in and then I'll go over to better and it's looking pretty good to me so I'll track it. And then I'm going to turn off this and leave everything as is. I'll add a new node and input the alpha and just to check, I'll grab this just to magenta so I can see what's happening. And then in the node key, I will invert it. So now we're just affecting the back. I'm not so worried about this border around the edge because that is something that will be removed anyways. So I'll go back here, reset and just push the background towards yellow. Subtlety is key here. If the goal was to have a black background but you shot it on white, you wouldn't go into this project doing that. That's like the farthest move that you can make. So adding just a little bit of color to the background is not that huge of a move. So you don't mind or you're not as bothered by it not being totally perfect. I mean, this isn't that subtle, but it's still working for me. And then I feel that her face is not living in the same world. So we can also see this little bit of hair here. What I would do for this, which I might not do today, if I couldn't get it in the magic mask, I would just pull some of her hair from here and track it onto here. Moving on, getting her face to live in the same world, I'm gonna add a parallel node, option P, and I'm also gonna drag the alpha. We're adjusting just her face here, and I'm gonna pull this to a little more yellow as well. Her face is adjusted separately, and the background is adjusted separately. So you can, let's say you want the background any color you want, and I'm just doing this in the offset, but I will go back to yellow. And I find that one reason that I would do this is if you're shooting something in a studio like this, and you want a bunch of different setups where there's different colored backgrounds. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but it's kind of annoying to change out the backgrounds and it's just an extra step that is a lot, but it is worth it because it improves the production value where there's different colors. It's not just white. You can have uh, more visual variety, but to shoot just on white and just focus in on that and maybe you have in a short commercial, for example, very quick moments you could have a couple different moments on different colored backgrounds in this approach. We have the yellow background here and I'll make a new version and just show what this might look like if we just push this to yellow. So I want my background here, but look at her face, it's too yellow, where here we have good skin tones. The background color is similar, but that background push without using the magic mask and separating these two elements is too much here. With anything like this, you need to be careful and you would never really go into a project starting out with making a look like this. As you can see, the look was created before we did this. For example, this shot of me talking right here, I would not you know, go into this knowing, oh, I'm just gonna fix the background because I have magic mask now. It's not really the right approach to think about things. If I said there's this one shot of me that's gonna last for 10 frames, I can fix the background later, maybe that's okay. But rarely do you approach shooting with this in mind. It's just kind of something extra that could happen later if the magic mask is behaving and if it looks good on a short clip, just kind of like this short clip right here. We can see that it's not even 
perfect right here. But as I mentioned, I might be able to grab some of her hair here, track it, put it on there. So another thing that I was experimenting with was using the magic mask for things that are not necessarily color related. Here we have a clip where I want to change the focus a little bit in the background. So we have the same approach as before where our grade is here and I'm going to add the magic mask here. I'll just do this quickly. Typically try to get it right in the faster and then I'll move over to better and that's fine for me. And then I'm going to add another node, put the alpha over, I'll turn this off. And then just to test to make sure we can see what we're doing, I'll change this to magenta and in the node key, I'll invert it. And also you want to move the alpha to another node so that you can work in nodes and not work in the node that the magic mask is in. Just for organizational purposes, I will reset this. And in open effects, I'm gonna grab defocus background. We can see that without the magic mask, the defocus background isn't, it's just getting everything. So magic mask is letting it only get this. I'm going to go to increase the blur a little bit. If you do something like this, this just looks ridiculous. So again, subtlety is key. I'm gonna slowly bring this up a little bit. This is already blurred enough, but I'm gonna bring this up a little so that I can do this. So we can see what that does. So I'm actually going to track this again for some reason. I notice sometimes with the magic mask, weird things happen, but you just gotta keep your eye on it. So we have this shot where we can see the very defined circles here and with our blur, which is even too much a little bit. We just kind of change them to a little bit of something that's different. Even with a default anamorphism, we can see that it takes down the sharpness, I guess you want to call, of the outest focus areas, and then stretching it to be a little bit vertical, and then to bring it down a little bit. So this remains slightly, this remains subtle, but it just kind of changes our look a little bit here. And then let's say also that I wanted to do something with the color here. I'm gonna go here, add a parallel node, push the alpha into here and just check where's our color going. Invert, reset. And let's say we wanted it to be, so we wanted to warm this up a little bit. It's kind of hard for me to see totally right now. That's a lot, so I'm just gonna back it off so we have it warmed up and then I wanna get her also warmed up just to be in the same world, but not as much. Again, check where it's going. Yes, it's on her and warm her up a little bit. So more stylized look here. And this is what we had before. You can see how big the move is on the background. We get her into the same warmer world, but can do it separately. Before we go to the last shot, I just wanna talk about Audio, who is sponsoring this video. They're the only sponsor that I've ever talked about on this channel. And I use them for all the music and sound effects. I love it. Link Match AI, which I've mentioned is amazing. You can pull a link from Spotify or YouTube and plug into audio and it will return songs that sound just like that, which is amazing and saves me tons of time. Also now they have elements where you can get the stems of all the music. Let's say you don't like the snare drum or you don't want the guitar or you just want the bass line of a song or you want to fade in and out of all of them. You can get all the stems from all the songs. That has also been super useful as well. I have a link below for 70% off for the first year. That would make your year for that price for a year of tons of music, sound effects, link match AI and elements so you can get the stems. It's kind of a no brainer. You can use it for uh, commercial work and your YouTube videos or whatever. Okay, last shot. This was lit like this. I want me to be more in the world of the background. So I'm going to try and see what we can do here. Magic mask. I'll just do it on my face. And that's looking pretty good. The reason that my face is not so much within the green in this shot is because I was being lit by the phone, which had a more neutral color to it. So I'll turn this off, add another, as usual, alpha. Check where we're going just to make sure and reset. And let's just see what happens when I push myself to the more green. Now I am kind of in the world a little bit more. So very quickly, 
I can be lit by the phone, but it's not lighting me any longer with a white light. And I feel more like in this greenish world here. And even if I'm too bright or too dark, we can adjust things and get me more in the right spot. It's not perfect yet, but it's better than the last time that I used it. And it can be something that in post can be decided to be used and help you out a bit, maybe add some extra value to or production value to your project, like in the studio where you needed a couple different colors, where you didn't shoot different color backdrops in the studio for real. I assume that this will continue to get better as time goes on and as Resolve gets updated, but for now it is still cool 